Hello everyone, welcome to, to the seventh part of chapter 13 on solutions. We've talked about a lot of things, how to, how to calculate concentrations different ways, about colloidal solutions, and now we're going to look at some interesting properties of solutions. Um, specifically, we're going to look at something called colligative properties. And we're going to define that for you, and then we're going to uh, perform some calculations. So colligative properties are properties that only rely on the how many solute particles you have. It doesn't matter what they are, okay? It only depends on the concentration of the solution. The vapor pressure of a solvent um, above a solution is lower than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. So if you add something that's non-volatile, that is it doesn't evaporate off, um, it reduces the rate of vaporization and so it decreases the vapor pressure. All right, so vapor pressure is where it's, it's, it's leaving the surface of the liquid, okay? So if you add something that doesn't do that easily to your original solvent, then it decreases how quickly that's going to evaporate. And you can imagine that that could be pretty useful. The difference between the vapor pressure of the pure solvent and the solvent in a solution um, is called the vapor pressure lowering. Okay, and so that change in pressure, or it's vapor pressure we're talking about, is the vapor pressure of the solvent minus the vapor pressure of the solution. Or another way of doing that is the mole fraction of the solute times the vapor pressure of the original solvent. So it comes in handy if you don't know what the vapor pressure of the solution is. So when you have a volatile solvent, okay, above a solution, it's equal to its normal vapor pressure. You multiply that by the mole fraction, like I said, and then that's going to give you the new pressure of the solvent in the solution. Because this mole fraction cannot be more than one, the vapor pressure of the solvent is always going to be less than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to lower the vapor pressure. And we're going to use um, a, this, you see this guy's name, Routes. Um, we're going to be using his law, and that's pretty much what this is, but it's, there's one that's a little more complex um, to figure that out. Okay, so the first colligative property we're going to do calculations on is vapor pressure. Okay, so <clears throat> to calculate the vapor pressure of a solution that you have put in something that's non-volatile, okay, we're going to look at the original and then we're going to see what the impact is on the vapor pressure. And remember, we're trying to decrease how quickly something vaporizes or evaporates. So um, in this particular problem, we are operating at 25 degrees C. We have 99.5 grams of sucrose. We have 300 milliliters of water. The vapor pressure of the pure water at this temperature is 23.8 torr. Remember, torr is the same thing as a millimeter of mercury. And the density of the water is one gram per milliliter. All right, so the so remember what we're trying to do here. Um, we're try, we're calculating the new vapor pressure. In order to do that, we're going to have to know the um, mole fraction. Okay, we're going to have to know the mole fraction because the new pressure is going to be equal to the mole fraction times the original pressure. Okay, and which we know is 23.8 torr. All right, so we have, so we're going to figure out how many moles of everything we have. So we've got 99.5 grams of our sucrose. That's the yummy kind. And then we need the 
um, formula weight of the of the sucrose, which when you add it all up is 342.3 grams per mole. Because I've got to convert this to moles, so one mole of sucrose is 342.3 grams. And that's going to give me moles of sucrose, which is 0 0.291. All right. Then how am I going to get uh, moles of water? Well, I've got, um, I've got a volume of water, and I've got the density of water. So I've got 300 milliliters of water. times the density, okay, over here, which is one gram per one milliliter, okay, and that's going to give me grams of water, and then um, one mole of water is the same as 18 grams of water, and that gives me 16.7 moles of water. So, so I need to know the mole fraction, all right, which is what this is, of the water, okay, because the water is the liquid. So um, the mole fraction of the water is going to equal the 16.7 grams divided by the total, I mean, sorry, moles, not grams, all right. 16.7 moles divided by the total moles, which is 0 0.291 plus 16.7. And that's going to give me a mole fraction of 0 0.983. So then from there, it's super simple. You've got um, the new vapor pressure of the water or uh, let's just say the solution, because it's got other stuff in it now, is going to be equal to the mole fraction of the water times the P0 of the water, the normal vapor pressure of the water. So that's going to be 0 0.983, which is my X sub water, times the original, which is 23, Point eight tor, and remember I said it's always going to be lower. So if you get something higher, you need to check yourself. All right, and so the new vapor pressure is going to be twenty three point four tor. So it didn't change a whole lot, right? But it did. It did change some by me adding that sucrose to it. All right. So that's how you calculate the vapor pressure of a solution. And I've given you, those of you who are my students, some formulas uh, for this unit. And so then you have a practice one. And it's very, very similar, okay, to the one I just gave you. So you should be able to work that one without any problems. And then here is the other one, which you may have to do a little thinking for because that's what those four more practice are all about. All right, so Rod's law for volatile solutes in ideal situations, that is our STP situations. The total um, the total pressure is going to be equal to the pressure of the solute plus the pressure of the solvent. That makes sense. The solvent decreases the solute vapor pressure the same way the solute decreased the solvents. So that means that the vapor pressure of the solute is now equal to the mole fraction of the solute times the original vapor pressure of the solute, because remember solutes can still be liquids. The Just like the solvent new vapor pressure is equal to the mole fraction of the solvent times the original vapor pressure under ideal conditions. So vapor pressure lowering occurs at all temperatures. Okay, you can do this at all temperatures. The temperature required to boil a solution is going to be higher 
than the boiling point of the pure solvent because you have added something that is going to make you add more energy to it to boil it. The temperature required to freeze a solution is lower now than the freezing point of the pure solvent. So what we're going to look at when we do some more calculations is we're going to look at boiling point lowering and freezing point and freezing point we call it well sorry boiling point we're going to increase it right so boiling point elevation sorry and freezing point depression I had it written wrong that's why it wasn't sounding right to me when I was saying it so boiling point elevation and freezing point depression and this has got some useful um, useful processes that we use um, very good applications in the real world so come back and we'll talk about some more colligative properties